from my side as well to this uh, session. Please take yeah, a seat yeah. and focus on the presentations. Um, we've got four presentations in this session, and I want to hand over to my co-chair to introduce the first two presentations. Thank you. So I am Savage Bogar uh, from UK Hungary. And uh, our first presenter is Thomas Makumbi, who will speak about the uncertainty analysis of equivalent lung dose coefficients. So please, your stage is yours. Thank you. Welcome to this talk. My name is Thomas Makumbi, and I come from KIT in Kausura, Germany. So I'll talk about uncertainty analysis of the lung dose for intake of radon progeny in mines. And this is part of my PhD work I'm doing at Kausura Institute of Technology under Radonom Work Package 3, Task 3.4. So uncertainty refers to lack of knowledge about a parameter value, whereby the value itself is fixed, but you usually don't know it with precision. So in statistics, uncertainty is modeled using probability theory, and it's given as a probability if you use the Bayesian approach or confidence interval in the case of classical statistics. So what happens is that upon inhalation of radon progeny, so we usually calculate the dose, but we use, we calculate this dose by applying the ICRP reference models and it's given in terms of dose coefficients. But of course, as we are aware, these dose coefficients are derived from parameters of a reference man or reference person. So therefore, this, this calculated reference dose does not apply to everyone because we all have different variabilities and also the exposure conditions may vary from place to place. So it's important to quantify the uncertainties in the dose. So it has to have a reliable estimate of the dose and also to inform the regulators when setting dose limits for intake by the public and workers. So the lung upon inhalation of radon progeny receives the greatest dose Actually, more than 95% of this dose is attributed to progeny as opposed to the radon itself, because usually the radon gas is exhaled, most of it. But the progeny particles upon entering the respiratory tract attach themselves to the respiratory airways, and therefore they deliver most of the dose to the lung because they have short half-lives and usually decay before being cleared by particle transport mechanisms, either to blood or to the alimentary tract. So this work was performed with those objectives in mind. First, I had to carry out a comprehensive literature review to understand the operation of the ICRP models and also to come up with parameters that affect the dose assessment process. And then I had to, we had to decide on the scenarios to study, all that using the information I compiled from the literature. Then having done that or having accomplished that, I had to develop a tool which I can use for dose assessment. And then later on to extend that very tool to do uncertainty and sensitivity analysis in the scenarios of interest to this work. And lastly, I had to, I have to perform those calculations, so, I mean uncertainty and sensitivity studies for selected, for selected scenarios in this work. Now, the, the tool I developed at KIT, we, we assigned it a special name, IntDose Kit. IntDose Kit is an abbreviation of internal dose at KIT. So like I talked about earlier, so those two figures represent the, the HRRTM used in those assessments. The HRRTM developed by ICRP 
is usually used to assess doses for intake of radionuclides by workers and the members of public. So this HRTM consists of the deposition model to model particle deposition in the alimentary tract, the particle transport model to model the movement of deposited radionuclides in the different airway regions up to excretion or absorption to blood, and also the absorption model, which deals with the modeling of absorption of the material into the blood and hence the systemic organs. So on the left, I don't know which side of you it is, you have, we have the morphology. And the morphology, the morphology normally depicts the structuring of this HRTM. The, the HRTM is structured in two, ma two main regions. We have the extrathoracic part, which consists of ET1, the anterior nasal passage, and, uh, and ET2, which comprises the larynx, pharynx, and mouth. Then we have the lung region or the thoracic part, which consists of the bronchi, bronchioles, and the alveolar interstitial regions, AI where gaseous exchange takes place. Now, when material is deposited in the HRTM after inhalation, it either moves by particle transport from the different regions to ET2. As you can see in this diagram, material deposited in ET1 is moved to ET2 and then to the alimentary tract or to the environment from ET1 by nose wiping or sneezing. Then also in the other regions, the particle transport process takes it to ET2. So I'll not dwell much on that. If you're interested, you can read about this in ICRP 66 and ICRP 130. So now, have, having to develop the software, the software does nothing but to implement the ICRP methodology for internal dose assessment. And this, these are, this is the mathematical model that I had to implement in the software, whereby I do the biokinetic modeling and the biokinetic modeling is scattered for by equations one and two, where equation one gives you the retention of, I mean, the number of decays in the different regions, or source regions within the biokinetic compartment. Somebody talked about the biokinetic models comprehensively yesterday, so I'll not go into their details. Equation two is for the for the active activity deposited in the in the source regions for a unit intake. Well, equation three gives you the radiation weighted S coefficient. That is the radiation energy emitted per decay in the source regions. Then equations four to seven give you the dose to the different target organs and tissues within the body. And for target regions comprised of one source region, you could use equation four and five to, as to, to calculate the dose. Well, for target regions comprising of several source regions, we have equation six and seven to cater for them. Then of course, equation eight, gives you the sex averaged equivalent dose to the entire body for reference male and female. And then for radon progeny, because the, in, because the intake is assessed or the activity is assessed in terms of potential alpha energy concentration, we have equation nine, nine to convert the dose calculated in sieverts per backrail to units of sievert per working level math as mostly used in mines or sieverts per millijoule hour per cubic meter. So the data required to implement these models was taken from those reference sources. For example, I had to get the number of decays to use in the modeling and this was accomplished by, by implementing and solving a biokinetic model so the model structures are given by ICRP in its publications, 100 for the HATM, 130 for the HRATM, the latest model, and the systemic models, of course, taken from ICRP, 137. 
Then the specific absorption fraction values for adult male and female reference phantoms are published in ICRP 133, as well as the mass of target regions in male and female phantoms. Then the nuclear decay data is published in ICRP 137, and then the radiation and tissue weighting factors published in ICRP 103. So this picture or this diagram depicts the methodology that was implemented in IntDOS kit. So whereby you have the reference model parameters, which when associated with the biokinetic model structure, we derive the reference bioassay functions, the, the retention and expression functions for that matter out of which we can integrate those functions to get the number of decays in the source region. So all we need from the biokinetic model is the number of decays in the source regions. So having got the number of decays, we, we, we multiply them by the S coefficients, the radiation weighted S coefficients I talked about earlier and we are able to output the reference dose to a particular organ or the effective dose for the entire body. So now that was the part for implementing and solving a biokinetic model. But because my main objective is for uncertainties, I had to extend the code to perform uncertainty and sensitivity analysis. And all that was required was to implement the Monte Carlo simulation in the code. And the Monte Carlo simulation is depicted by the diagram here. In that, instead of using ICRP reference parameters available to calculate the reference dose, now I have to, to calculate dose depending on a particular person and a particular scenario. So, what was necessary for that to be done, I had to come up with probability distribution for the model parameters published in literature. And where I could not get concrete results or conclusive results, I had to use personal judgment or consult different experts available. So the model parameters were assigned probability distribution and in the implementation of the Monte Carlo, for each run, I would sample from the probability distribution a particular set of parameters to be used in solving the model. Now, having got those parameters, I could take them back to the ICRP approach and solve for each run a particular scenario. Now, this, this solution of a particular scenario for each run outputs a dose distribution from which I can perform statistical analysis and get an out, I mean, and get summaries on that distribution to characterize the dose distribution. Or for this case, we could also have the distribution for the number of decays and for the biokinetic functions. I mean, I mean the bioassay functions. So now statistic evaluation can be done for the sampling where you sample all parameters, that one we call it the global uncertainty analysis or for a part where you sample a single parameter and that's sensitivity analysis. So the parameters used in the, in the different scenarios are these where you have the scenarios for job type one and, and I mean parameters for job type two, or that dif what differentiated the two scenarios was the aerosol characteristics highlighted in green, as you can see. So now I take you to the results. The results for the first objective were compiled and published in this work in the Journal of Environmental Activity. So the model was also validated with ICE against ICRP data and the results were in good agreement. And those calculations that was objective to was done for the two scenarios 
of job type 1 and job type 2 and those are the doses available and for this work we are mainly introduced interested in the doses to the bone marrow colon lung and st stomach bone surface brain the heart and the lymphatic nodes highlighted in green so results for objective two three and four where a manuscript was generated for this and submitted to the journal of radiation physics and chemistry and still under review and next i show you the results for the uncertainty analysis for global uncertainty analysis for the two jobs, job, job type one and job type four. So as you can see, the lung dose is highest and the, the summary of these distributions is given here. The dose distribution was characterized by a logo no, normal distribution for, those, for both job types. And for job types, this distribution was characterized with a geometric mean of 42 millisievert per megajoule hour per cubic meter and a GSD of 1.5, which gives you a 95% confidence interval between 18.67 and 94.5. Likewise, for job type 4, you had a geometric mean of 62.14 and a GSD of 1.46 and the 95% confidence interval range from 29.15 to 139.12. So we saw that in the calculated doses, the dose for job type 4 were 1.4 times higher than for job type 1, meaning miners performing job type 4 are 40% for, are for, are at higher risk as opposed to job type 1 and the uncertainties in the doses for job type 1 was higher than for job type 4. So the conclusion, the software was successfully developed and validated, and this tool proved reliable for performing uncertainty and sensitivity studies. So uncertainty for job type 1 was higher compared to job type 4, this simply because there were many uncertainties on the input parameter for this job type as opposed to job type 4. So job type 4 poses more risks to minus than job type 1. And this was because of the nature of how dry drilling is performed. First of all, you have a, a low level of plate out of the radon progeny, a higher equilibrium factor, and also a higher fraction of the attached progen. So that's it for this talk and comments and suggestions are now welcome. Thank you, Thomas. Mm -hmm. It is excellent presentation and uh, we have some time for some questions. Do we have questions here? Online? Then I guess we can go because we are late anyway.